after a vaginal delivery, the vagina, perineum, and anorectum are examined to identify and repair significant injuries. Sometimes it can happen the damage of the anal sphincter, and it is important to recognize and repair it. Because in case of neglected and not repaired immediately after the delivery, this can contribute to anal and fecal incontinence for the mother. In this video, we are going to review how to repair an anal sphincter injury after a delivery. Hello everybody, this is Gala Melgar. I am gynecologist for aulagynecologia.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a third or fourth degree perineal tear after a vaginal delivery. Remember there is a classification and there are four kinds of obstetrical perineal lacerations. First degree involves injury to the skin and subcutaneous tissue. In second degree tear, this is extend to the musculatory of the perineal body, including deep and superficial transverse perineal muscles, pubococcygeus and vulvocavernous muscles. Third degree tear involves injury of external anal sphincter and or internal sphincter. Third degree A involves less than 50% of external sphincter thickness is torn. 3B is more than 50% of external sphincter torn. Third degree C means that both external and internal sphincter are torn. And finally the fourth degree involves both anal sphincter complex and anal mucosa injury. For the repairment of third and fourth degree tears, you should prepare the patient and shift him to operating room, as this may improve the access to appropriate equipment, lighting, anesthesia support, and maintenance of aseptic conditions. Normally, a single dose of broad-spectrum antibiotic should be given prior to repair to reduce wound complications. Third and fourth degree tears should be repaired before first or second degree tears if they are existing. Muscle fibers or sphincters tend to retract over the time, so we must identify and repair these tears immediately after the labor. The internal sphincter is responsible of 75% of anal continence and its repairment is just possible immediately after labor. The repairment over the time can be extremely difficult and it definitely worsens the prognosis of the patient. Sphincter repairment over the time is much more difficult than immediate repairment after delivery with worsened prognosis of anal incontinence. Regarding to the surgical technique, the aim of reconstructive surgery is to restore the continuity of both external and internal sphincters. The optimal repair consists in a multi-layer closure and it is very important that stitches do not pass through the rectal mucose because this could increase the risk of vaginorectal fistula. In the fourth degree tier, the repair of the torn anal mucosa, we will do it using a continuous not locking suture with Bicryl 3.0 no rapid. Absorbable monofilament suture is also acceptable and interrupted sutures can also be used but being aware that the knot must be always towards the rectal lumen. So knots will be easily spontaneously removed with the pass of the stool and also we are avoiding larger uh, quantity of foreign body in the tissue. If we do continuous suture as we see in the model there will just be two knots both must be towards the rectal lumen. So the suture needs to start with a knot in, out, out, in and finish in the same way. In the model you will see it's made with monofilament but in the real life we should do it with polyfilament absorbable suture. And then
And then when we are facing the third degree tear uh, for repairing the internal anal sphincter, it should be properly identified and repaired as a separate layer. It often retracts laterally and superiorly and appears as a pale pink shiny tissue just above the anal mucose. The repairment of this layer is very important for achieving the anal continence. End-to-end -end separated stitches or continuous suture can be done with Bicryl 2.0 and also mattress stitches as seen in the video may help very much to confront the edges. For the repairment of the external anal sphincter if it is a third A degree tear then end-to-end -end technique is required. But if it is injury of the whole external sphincter, then over overlap technique is preferred. For overlapping, we need to identify external sphincter fibers and hold them with an alice clamps. If necessary, also mobilize of tissue can be done to correct and identify the reddish ends of external sphincter. For the overlapping technique, it is important to follow always the same steps. We will start closing to the edge from up-down direction in the first end. We will go to the other end, give the stitch in the same line, same direction, up-down, but farther. And then we go to the opposite movement from down-up direction in second end, closer to the edge, and the last one down up farther in the first end. We will repeat this until all fibers are overlap. First two steps, up down direction, closer farther, and third four steps, down to up direction, closer farther to overlap. I would recommend to hold the suture and knot them all in the end to facilitate further suturing. Practicing in models like this one in foam paper can help you to improve the practice and prepare better yourself for further perennial repairments.